Hi, in this video we're going to talk about concavity and inflection points. So we're just going to talk about the definitions and how to locate them on a graph. This video is not going to get into calculating them with calculus. Uh, just how to identify them and their definitions and what they look like on a graph. So whether a function is concave up or concave down, uh, we're going to compare that to the um, rate of change. And then we're also going to identify where the inflection point is as well. So let's take a look. Okay, let's talk about concavity and inflection points. We're going to use this graph as an example. First, we're going to focus on the left part of the graph, so this part right here. So on this part right here, let's take a look at some points. So we've got five different points on here, and let's create a table on those points. So negative 4 is at negative 8, and so forth. Now let's take a look at the average rate of change for those. So the change in y over the change in x. So on the first one, the negative 8 and negative 3.4 has a difference of negative uh, 4.6. And then it also has a x change of negative 1. So notice that the change is positive. So each of these changes are positive, which makes sense because if we're going left to right, our average rate of change um, increases from left to right. So our average rate of change here is positive. But notice that it's going down. So it goes from 4.6 down to 2.4 to 0.75 to 0.25. So the average rate of change is decreasing. So the shape of that graph and the point where average rate of change is decreasing, we call that concave down. Now let's take a look at the right side, this side right here. So if we look at it, a bunch of points on there and create a table. And then we're again going to take the average rate of change. You'll notice that they're still positive. So we're still, as we're going left to right, the function is still increasing. So our average rate of change is positive. However, the average rate of change starts out at 0.25, then goes up to 0.75, and up to 2.4. So the average rate of change is positive, but the average rate of change is increasing. So a point where we have an average rate of change that's increasing, and the shape looks like this, we say that is concave up. So the relationship here to keep in mind is average rate of change is decreasing, we've got concave down. The average rate of change increasing, we got concave up. That can happen in either case, whether the average rate of change is positive or negative, but it's whether it's increasing or decreasing that defines whether we're concave up or concave down. And then we've got a point right in between where we're concave down and concave up. So it's the point that connects those two, and we call that an inflection point. So that's the point right there that's in between where we concave down and where we are concave up. Okay, so let's take a look at this problem here. We've given a graph. I've uh, got the equation of the graph y equals 1 third x to the third plus x squared minus 3x. And we have the um, graph drawn out as well. And so we're going to identify on this graph where the rate of change is positive and negative, where it's increasing and decreasing, where the relative mins and maxes are, uh, at what interval it's concave up and concave down, and where the inflection point is. So let's start with positive rate of change. So positive rate of change is going to be when we're going from left to right, um, the function is going to be going up. So all along here, right, and here and here and here, we keep going up until we reach to this point. So from negative infinity right to this point here, the rate of change is positive to negative 3. All the way to negative 3. So from negative infinity to negative 3, the rate of change is positive, but it's also positive here as well. So it's positive starting here, right, and moving up to infinity as well. So from 1 to positive infinity, it's also 
positive. So a positive rate of change uh, corresponds with a positive slope. So if you were to look, if you were to take any secant line on either of these, um, you would have a positive slope. All right, so we've got those two intervals on which we've got a positive rate of change. Now, a negative rate of change means where is it going down? So starting from this point, starting from negative three and going all the way to positive one, on that interval, the graph is going down. If you were to take um, any secant line on that section, you would have a negative a line with a negative slope. So the negative rate of change happens on the interval of negative three to negative one. Now let's look at the increasing rate of change. So first of all, we've got to notice that right here at negative one, it appears to, to change from bending this way to bending this way, right? So it's very subtle here, but at this point here, it's bending this way and here it's bending this way. I'm exaggerating that just to show you, um, but right at that point, it seems to be a change. So if we look at the left side of that, we've got, we're going from very steep to less steep and less steep and less steep. So all along here, we have a decreasing rate of change. Now it continues to decrease here, even though it goes negative, it's still decreasing. It's negative and it's becoming more negative until we get to here. Once we hit this point, so if you look at all these lines, it's turning in one direction. At this point, it starts to go, instead of turning this way, it starts to turn the other way. So these are all going the opposite way, right? So the, so the um, rate of change in, in this whole section to the right, you'll notice that it's going from less steep to more steep as you go up. So on the up to this point, we've got a decreasing rate of change. And on the right side, we have an increasing rate of change. So let's put those in. So that interval is going to be from negative infinity all the way to that point where we saw it change, which is that negative one. That's the decreasing and the increasing, which I just put in, is going to be from that negative one all the way up to positive infinity. All right. Now let's locate the relative min or max, or also called the local min and max. We've got a maximum here and a minimum here. Now notice you can pick it off of the graph, but you could also know that the relative min and max is going to be the point in between where you have a positive rate of change and a negative rate of change. Where it changes from a positive rate to a negative rate is going to be a relative maximum. And where it changes from a negative rate to a positive rate is going to be a relative minimum. So those two points are going to be our maximum is at negative three. If you want to put the full point in there, negative three, nine. And at x equals one or one, um, negative one and two thirds is going to be our point, our min and our max. Okay, let's take a look at concave up. So concave up is going to be starting at the point where it changes. This shape is basically up from here all the way to infinity it's concave up um, so negative one to infinity notice also without even looking at the graph concave up is going to be the same place where we have an increasing rate of change same thing with concave down so concave down if we look at the graph this area here has a basic concave down shape but also we can look at concave down is going to be the same interval of where we have a decreasing rate of change. So you can either get those from the graph or by looking at where the, in, where the rate is either increasing or decreasing. And then the inflection point is just going to be the point in between 
where we have concave down and concave up. So that point in between is right there. So the inflection point is going to be at negative 1. The full point is going to be negative 1 and 3 and 2 thirds. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments on this video or suggestions for future videos, just comment below. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe, you can do so right over here. And I've got another suggestion for you to watch right here. Thank you and come back again soon.